In this first reactions of alkenes videos, I'm just going to take a look at the general reaction that takes place when alkenes react. So you can see on the board there, I've written up the general structure of an alkene with one carbon-carbon double bond. I'm not specifying what's on these bonds here. That's not really important for this video. The important thing is to look at this molecule here. So we've got the molecule that's reacting with the alkene written in the form AB. So I always like to think of the, the reacting molecule in two parts. So when I do the subsequent videos where I'm actually specifying what's reacting with the alkenes, it could be hydrogen or halogen for example, I will be referring back to this AB analogy. So we'll use the model kits to help explain what's going to happen. So you can see there's the alkene, and I've labelled up, we've got a pi bond, remember, in the carbon-carbon double bond, and a sigma bond. So what's going to happen is, because the pi bond's weaker than the sigma bond, it's the one that's going to break. So you can see what's happened there in the models. We've got this pi pair of electrons here is broken, and there it is there, and that's enabled us to attach the, the B part of the AB molecule. So there it is there, and that would obviously leave um, space on this carbon atom for the remainder of the AB molecule to form a covalent bond there. So this type of reaction is known as an addition reaction, and it's fairly obvious to see why. We've started with two reactants, we've basically added this across the double bond, and we've created one product. On another video, I actually go into the detail of the mechanism, but for the purpose of this overview, just letting you know that this is known as electrophilic addition. And just be careful with your spelling of electrophilic, there's only one L at the end there. So many people write double L and unfortunately lose a mark as a result. And another very important point to make is the fact that this type of reaction has 100% atom economy. So if you imagine this is your desired product, all of the atoms go into making this product. So there are no other molecules, waste molecules, that need to be got rid of. So 100% atom economy. So the beauty about this AB model that we use, or that I use, it helps you when you come across slightly less um, straightforward molecules. So we've got a cyclic alkene here. So if you just think about it, that's basically the same as that there. And so if we just apply the same logic, the double bond's going to break and we're going to put A on one carbon and B on another. And so we would get something like that. If you've got something like this, this is a diene, so it's got two carbon-carbon double bonds. We're still going to get the same reaction, but provided there's enough AB, so of course you might say um, this diene was reacted with an excess of AB, then to balance that we'd need two of those, because each AB will add across each of the double bonds. And that would give you a product like this. This would typically be a harder type of question because if you think about it, this AB here could actually add the other way around and give you an isomer. So we'd have the Bs together. So that's slightly different. And obviously that makes that sort of question a little bit more difficult. But this general reaction really does help cope with these more complicated types of questions.